welcome back to Zoo Crafting. This is actually the second time I'm recording this because I did an entire episode and then when I finished it, I realized I didn't record a single bit of it. So, this is going to be a recap. It's probably going to be a really short episode because I've done everything. And the first thing I want to say is, yes, I am wearing my science outfit because... I think it's great because we're learning things. So I thought it would be great to wear my sciencey outfit. So I'm a scientist. I'm learning things. That's what scientists do. They learn stuff. They figure out stuff. So there. So the first thing we did <laughs> that I didn't record is we made a scarab sword. We made a scarab sword. And we finished our ancient helmet, and we were like, yeah, this looks kind of scurry. It's very scurry, and it doesn't really do much, but it's a thing. Uh, I finished my mashed potatoes and I have some garden soup. Uh, we rescued a horse because there's a horse in the water. And uh, I'm being texted. And there was a horse over here. And he's in the water. And I rescued him. And he's fine. See, he's right here. I saved him. He was in the water under the bridge. We made a lead and we pulled him to safety and it was very dramatic and it was very awesome and it's not recorded. So then you're hearing the noise. What we also did is we hatched some Raphis Cucculatus, otherwise known as a Dodo, Dodo Dio. And look at them, they're so cute, you guys. They are so cute. You don't get to see me hatch them though because I recorded that, but I didn't record it. So that's the thing. But the reason why we had to hatch these guys was because I discovered that my compies uh, are, uh, they do eat. Somebody also, I noticed somebody uh, was here and they took the book and they read the book and then they didn't put the book back. So that's the thing. But look how big these guys are. These guys are like four days, four days old. They do eat too. I've discovered they do eat. Six days old. Holy cow. They're getting so big. Are you stuck back there? Do I have to grab you? There you go. There you go. Look at them. They're so big now. And they do eat food. And there is a way to turn on the feathers in the thing. Just, uh, I haven't done it yet. Probably before the next episode, I will definitely turn that on. So we'll have feathers on these guys. Um, another people thing people have been complaining about, they were like saying that uh, I had to be careful because uh, t dinosaurs can clip through these walls, the glass panes, and they can glitch through them. But I think with the compies and the dodos, we'll be safe from that. Are you eating something? Because they are so little. I think the bigger dinosaurs, we're probably going to have to set up, set up the uh, habitats a little bit differently. But for these guys, I think we're fairly safe. Plus, they're easy... They're easy uh, to they're easy to call back because I can just find them and then use the bone to call to make them come back in here. So it's no big deal if one gets out. Now don't go near the door. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna learn a little bit about the dodo because that's what we do. We learn things. It's nice to learn things, guys. So while we're listening to them cluck and the zombie that's wherever the zombie is nearby. Oh, that zombie's gonna drive me crazy. I don't know where he is. Okay, let's go over here by the horse. There we go. It's nice and quiet over here. The dodo, Raphis cucoletus, is an extinct flightless bird that was endemic to the islands of Meridus, east of Madagascar and the Indian Ocean. The closest living relative of the dodo is the Nicobar pigeon. Subfossil remains show the dodo was about 1 meter, 3 feet, 3 inches tall, and may have weighed 10.6 to 21.1 kilograms, which is 23 to 47 pounds. The dodo's appearance in life is evidenced only by drawings, paintings, and written accounts from the 17th century. Because these vary considerably, and because only some illustrations are known to have been drawn from live specimens, its exact appearance in life remains unresolved, and little is known about its behavior. Though the dodo has historically been considered fat and clumsy, it is now thought to have been well adapted for its ecosystem. It has been depicted with brownish gray plumage, yellow feet, a tuft of tail feathers, and a gray naked head, and a black, yellow, and green beak. It used gizzard stones to help digest its food, which is thought to have included fruits, and its main habitat is believed to be been the woods in the drier coastal areas of Meridus. One, of the, one account states its clutch is considered of a single egg. 
basically what that means is that when it had when it laid its eggs it only laid like one egg at a time which would probably uh, honestly what i think i mean i'm not a scientist you guys so i don't really know i'm not a botanist or geneticist or anything like this but i'm thinking if if a creature only lays like one egg at a time it kind of brings down its chances for repopulating and keeping its its uh numbers up there so whether or not you know that's actually fact or not i don't know but it would explain how they became extinct so fast the first recorded mention of the dodo was by Dutch sailors in 1598. In the following years, the bird was hunted by sailors and invasive species while its habitat was being destroyed. The last widely accepted sighting of a dodo was in 1662. Its extinction was not immediately noticed and some considered it to be a mythical creature. In the 19th century, research was conducted on a small quantity of remains of four specimens that had been brought to Europe in the early 17th century. Among those is a dry head, which is the only soft tissue of the dodo that remains today. They still have that preserved. Is that not cool? The extinction of the dodo within less than a century of its discovery called attention to the previously unrecognized problem of human involvement in the disappearance of entire species. The dodo, what, what that means honestly is the dodo helped us realize that we as people uh the we as people had an effect on animals and their existence in the world and it took the dodo disappearing so soon after we discovered it to make stuff discover it to make us go maybe we did something wrong here <laughs> The dodo achieved widespread recognition from its role in the story of Alice's adventures in Wonderland and has since become a fixture in popular culture, often as a symbol of extinction and obsolescence. So that's a pretty cool thing. I love learning these new facts and stuff. Like, I did not know this much about dodos. At all. There we go. So hopefully nobody takes that book. So those are the dodo dios. And they're all grown up already, you guys. Do they lay eggs? Do you guys lay eggs? Look at them. They're all grown They're all grown up. They're no longer babies. Do you guys lay eggs? Can you lay me some eggs? I need food for my other animals. You guys make the cutest noises. I love the dodos. Look at them. They're so cute. Do you lay eggs at all? No? Alright. We'll come back. I want to try to figure out where these zombies are. So, where are my shovels? I'm going to put my armor. My pants are about broke. And we're going to get my shovel and we're going to discover where this thing is. Where are we hearing? Okay. That's my paleontology. Paleontology. There we go. We have discovered the bad. We need to clear this out, so. Bang, ring. Nope. There we go. We need to light this up. Light all this up. So, no zombies will spawn here. There we go. No more zombie noises. It's going to be nice and quiet and zombie free. Where'd I come out? This way. Alright, so we'll use this to get out. Come on. Come on! Let me out. Can I get out? Thank you. I need the uh, dirt. There we go. Do you guys lay eggs all? 
I don't know if they do. We do need a dodo farm, so we need them to uh, lay us eggs. Like, I think if I get another one, I'm going to put one in a little pen above a box, a <laughs> hopper box, so we can collect eggs from them. Because I do need more dodo eggs, so I can have a nice dodo farm to feed all the our meat eater. And we want to make sure, like, you know... There we go. Fixing that a little. So the next dinosaur I think we're going to do, and they're not really all dinosaurs, I get that is we have these quagga and equus quagga quagga DNA I think it's just equus quagga so we have these quaggas and I think we're gonna do them next see I'm going with like the more harmless species before we start going into some of the more like vicious I think we're gonna go then after plant eaters after we do the quagga and probably the mammoth we're gonna do some vegetable like some some vegetarian ones and then we're to go to some carnivorous ones I'm kind of scared to do about the carnivorous I know that that you these guys these compies are carnivorous but they're so little they're so little I know that if they weren't tame they'd probably like tear me a new one but oh well so I think that's gonna be it for today I know it's a really short episode unfortunately that's because uh, this is a re-recording and I've done everything already. So like if you guys have liked this video, leave me some comments down below and I will see you guys next time on Zoo Crafting. Bye bye